So here in InDesign, we're going to have a look at a text wrap issue that pops up from time to time. So we have a box here, and eventually we're going to have our text and our images um, all in this box and placed inside our, our box here for some product information and some images of those products. So I'm just going to leave the images over there for the moment and just have a look at this box. So the box is a white box with a red outline and I'm going to drop this over the text here. So I'm going to add a text wrap to this. So I'm going to go to Window, Text Wrap, and I normally bring up my text options from the Window menu um, rather than dealing with it up in the Options panel up here um, because it has all the options that we need for text wrap here. So I'm going to wrap around the bounding box here, which is great. We'll add a little offset and we'll lock those together. So we'll add a little offset here so the text doesn't bump up against the edge of this. And then once we've got this in place, we will grab our images. Great. And use the smart guys to line things up. And then we'll grab our text box and pop that in there. And at this point, things break. So basically, this is a common problem that I've been asked a few times um, in classes that I teach is why does my text not show up? And obviously, the reason is that we have text wrap on that background box. Now there's two ways of uh, dealing with this. One is to keep our text box selected and then go to Object, Text Frame Options and ignore Text Wrap and that will bring our text back there. So that's a perfectly decent option. Um, the other option and one that I like um, is I'm just going to make a duplicate of this. So I'm going to select all of these and copy them and we'll just paste them and pull them up to the top. I'm going to change this back to the regular option, which is this unchecked. And basically what I'm going to do is take the text wrap off this object, so no text wrap on the object. Now, if you're designing a catalog or a brochure or something like that, then this is probably something that you're going to repeat in your design um, in different places. So what I would normally do is select those four objects, go to object and group, and then at this point if we add the text wrap, it's adding the text wrap around that group rather than to the just the image frame in the background. So now if I drag this down here, we have the text wrap um, around this object, just the same as we have the text wrap around the object above it, um, but we have it all in one group. Now if we take this and we want to modify say an image in here, we can still double click in there and it's going to allow us to modify that image and we can double click in here and modify the text. So there's no restriction to what we can do when we're actually editing within that group. So it's just a nice way of dealing with things. I will also, if I'm dealing with bigger projects, actually come up to Window and CC Libraries and then I can actually take this object and drag it into my library so that I have that whole object available. So that means if I'm designing something different or I'm on a different page, um, then once I've added my text, we'll just drop in some placeholder text there and give it some paragraph style. So once I've uh, got this all set up, I can come to my libraries and just drop this right into my design. Okay. So I can use and reuse these objects and because the CC library is on the cloud, I can use it on whichever computer I'm logged in at, which is great. So it means if I'm logging in and out of different computers um, with my Adobe ID, then my own CC library will uh, come up um, when I move to a different computer, which is really handy. It also means it's shareable as well, so via email with other users that are logged into a CC library, you can share these artworks um, that you're using here as well. So I hope that's useful. A couple of tips there for how to organize your text wraps when you're working with collections of text and images. If you have any questions about InDesign, then do leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.